FedEx. Streets are worth sharing. My talk centers on something that we all go through every day. Traffic, that defines our daily lives. And uh, I don't think anyone can offer any alternative facts to counter that. And this results in com commute times for everyone in the metro and uh, in the NCR from one to four hours each way. And this results in, as the stats will show, 128 billion pesos lost annually with repercussions to productivity, to health, and of course, our sanity. <laughs> now the government is going to spend billions more addressing what they perceive to be the problem by building more roads, flyovers, elevated, everything that, yes, I have to go there. Thank you very much, because I'm out of screen. That won't do. Uh, all of this construction, if you, if you um, build more, it will just induce more traffic. It's called induced demand. Uh, look it up. Uh, and solving uh, traffic by widening roads is akin to trying to solve gluttony by uh, loosening one's belt. Or, or unzipping like this. Feels better, but I'm still fat. No, it won't do. This is uh, my daily scene going home. And um, the problem is not traffic. Traffic is just a symptom of, of uh, transport. And the solution to uh, the problem is really to address the lack of a rational transport system, bad access, and non-inclusive mobility. But the solution, really, the key is mass transport. And we all know that the solution to a very dense city is uh, BRT, MRT, and everything else except private cars. But that's not the subject of my talk. My, my subject is really about something we all forget. We are all commuters, and we, we start and end all of our journeys by walking. And for the 80% of us who take public transport, this involves the commute of one to four hours, 20, 30% of that involves walking and waiting. Now, the infrastructure uh, for that is, is uh, sort of uh, seen in here. It's called the sidewalk something that a lot of us don't see enough of. Unfortunately, in the Philippines, sidewalks are badly designed, ill-maintained, and used for functions other than walking. <laughs> I long for a city or metropolis that where people have more rights, pedestrians have more rights than SUVs. Parking everywhere. People think that uh, sidewalks are their own private garages everywhere. I document this all the time from my car window, so sad to say. But it's in all of the 16 cities and one ridiculous town that produces docks in Metro Manila. Tricycles, cars, even trucks. <laughs> this is in um, For Forbes. I don't know the name now. They keep on changing the names. Laxon, thank you very much. And the best places for people to, to, to walk are the ones taken over by cars. This is in Quezon City. Wonderful Bougainvillea, but it's a garage. So sidewalks and street corners are used for other things. They're used for vending, the commerce of man. You can have uh, your, any, any uh, culinary delight that you can think of. Mr. Bourdain would love all of our sidewalks because they offer the whole gamut of, of uh, what fills your stomach. And vendors think that uh, they have a right to, to the sidewalk leaving just enough space, about 800 uh, C, uh, mm, so people, at least one and a half person can pass. So a lot of people will walk in uh, Philippine sidewalks this way. <laughs> I'll show you, I have a picture of that. And you can buy anything you want. Shoes, and I found 
that this is not just in Metro Manila, it's all, all of the other cities. People sell shoes maybe because you, they wear off so fast that you have to buy them in the street. You can have your attorney. <laughs> That's how you make money on the sidewalks. And you can load at the same time from the same person. And you can get an education from the streets. <laughs> UP, UST, may Harvard pa. Rush job. And you can have anything assembled on the streets. Steel, wood, 3D printing by the sidewalks. And of course, all of our markets spill out and occupy the, the sidewalks so people have to walk on the road. But there, there are other reasons for that. But the sidewalk is seen as free, free game for everyone. And they see how they block. Even, they even store the, the, their, their wares outside in the street. And of course, you have a very nice social setting. And this is uh, what has replaced Philippine plazas in our modern cities. And here, you can see, you have formal and informal <laughs> eating. You have McDonald's and you have McDonald's. <laughs> but this happens all the time, so it's... Uh, in this sense, uh, the city is pretty fair, open to everyone. And I'm sorry, um, all of this informal uh, vending and business, you have to have a, a, a leasing agent, and that's the leasing office. <laughs> if you want to have space on the sidewalks, this is where you go to apply. Walang recibo, of course. So the police, even the police themselves are on our sidewalks. This is a barangay hall on the, on the street corner because there is no more space for civic building. The public ram has disappeared from all of our towns and cities because of a poverty of space. And if you don't have space on the sidewalk, go upstairs. So this is a barangay hall built on top of the road. Very creative. I don't know who the architect is, but I'd give him a, or her a, a, an award. This is in passing. Yes. So, sidewalks are also um, Poland. They have Puno ng Pol. All of the utilities come <laughs> Pol land. Okay. Because uh, the utilities, you cannot put electrical on a different pole, on the same pole as your, your cable, as the same pole as, they all have to have their poles. And the poles are in between the lots. And there's no space in the lots, so you have to put it in the sidewalk, and you have no space left. The pass. There we go, more poles. At least, nilagyan ng stripes so you won't hit it while texting. <laughs> which a lot of people do. And of course, it's used for signage. All of the barangay leaders have to have their names by the corner. Be it barangay in Manila or the barangay in Bel Air. You will see that they have the signs, their Apple signs at the, at the corner. And of course, the uh, National Pastime Basketball has covered the entire street corner and sidewalk. Here, the corner has disappeared. I don't know what happened to it, but it became, uh, it's now, it's a green thing. <laughs> and again, more parking. Where, where, where the heck do you pass? And of course, walking on our sidewalks is very tiring. So. <laughs> It's a free space for display of anything and everything. Now, if you have to take a leak, this is what you used to be able to. I miss Bayani Fernando's interventions, despite the color selection. At least you can relieve yourselves. Today, that's gone, and it's been replaced by things like this. I mean, how in heaven's name? And I, I, I really wonder what that liquid is at the bottom. Of course, sidewalks being a religious country, we pray on our sidewalks. We have no parks, we have no plazas to build our churches in front of. They're built in front of highways. So we have our ladies, our la that's a virgin, the virgin, our vir the virgin of the corner, our lady of precast, Nuestra Señora de Rejas, over there. <laughs> and this is, uh, Oh, the block Nazarene, because you find one in every block. <laughs> Even the people you, you, who vowed to defend you are occupying the, the sidewalks. The Avengers. They've been there forever. I think in Santa Claus, I took this in Christmas. 
So what we have to do is really change the, the National Building Code and the guidelines by the HLURB. A lot of the laws pertaining to the public realm and sidewalks are archaic. They were made when cities were very not dense, when our population was uh, 50 million, when our cities were not as dense as they, they are today, they're totally. The good news is, is that the NBC, the National Building Code, is being reviewed as we speak. But we have to take this to the, the authorities because that section for pedestrians is the smallest. And nobody listens to uh, the infrastructure needed for pedestrians because they cost the least money. Yet we are not spending enough for public infrastructure as regards to pedestrians and bikers. So, the good news also is that um, in some cities, and uh, w for some of us, we have been, uh, had the good luck of being involved in projects that address this problem. Ayala, even though it looks good, uh, a couple of years ago, we were asked to fix up the sidewalks because the trees had died because of the compaction, and uh, the pavement was broken because you trip and fall. So we corrected it. The two kilometers is now paved with solid granite, which will last forever, something that we have to uh, teach the government to do. Uh, the, the planting is moved to the side with endemic trees to provide shade. The, but the, fund, the people funding is, this is private. It's the Masaya, the Building Owners Association. Now we're doing the same thing for uh, the Ortiga CBD, and we tried to expand the sidewalk already wide, and we did it by convincing them that if we took off the middle island, we could expand both sides of the sidewalk by 1.2 meters each. And they said yes. Fantastic, because the funder was, in fact, a uh, passing city government whose mayor is an architect. So we did that, and that's what the reality now. So we have improved uh, the situation because we found in a study that people could not get from one end of the CBD to the other because of the long blocks and the lack of a good pedestrian system and other uh, things besides in the per param perimeter of uh, CBD. And we're putting a bike lane, it's already there. There. <laughs> That's the worst sidewalk in Metro Manila. Exactly the worst. Everybody, you should really try. If you've not done this in Metro Manila, you, ha you have not experienced Metro Manila. But, in fact, we are solving this problem. It's a project by the ADB and the DOTR. We are going to connect above grade with the EDSA MRT to Mega Mall, to Poveda, to Ortigas. Robinsons loves this, Poveda loves this because now they can park in uh, Mega Mall and walk to the school. Everyone loves this because we have, we have uh, studied that people take between 10 to as much as 30 meters to walk to their offices. With this uh, elevated walkways and the connection to the interior of Ortigas, it cuts their walking travel time in half. And we found out that Op Opal and Onyx Road are much too wide for the traffic they now uh, carry. We have convinced them to allocate half of the space for a linear park or greenway. And this is going to be built. There's a bike hub, hub that will have uh, showers and toilets for bikers when they come to the district. So this is a proof of concept. Uh, it's been green-lighted. The drawings are completed. It will be built, hopefully, within the year. And place for public art. This is the most successful story uh, of improvement in the public realm in the, in the last decade. Senator Drillon asked us to take a look at this dike road, underused, but people were jogging and, and walking in the morning, and asked us to uh, create an esplanade for pedestrians, and we did it. The design was done in three months. The construction of the first 1.2 kilometer stage was uh, completed in eight months at a price that's less than market rate. It's not overblown. And the biggest news, before we built this improvement to the public realm, the cost of real estate beside the esplanade was two to 3,000 pesos per square meter. Today, it's 15 to 18,000 pesos. The value accrues, profit accrues, not just to the people enjoy, of Iloilo who enjoy the esplanade, but also to the uh, landowners. So now you can, my mistake, I didn't buy land 
beside it. We're now in phase four and five all the way to Muele Loni. So things are happening in Iloilo. So added to this, the Aquino Boulevard, we convinced DPWH, and it's really very hard to convince people who just build roads, to provide 40% of the easement for pedestrians and bikes. And surprise, surprise, they said, yes, I don't know. I'm, I must have slipped them something medical. But uh, they said yes. Of course, they had uh, the, the support of uh, the senator, congressman, and the mayor. And we built it. And that's how it looks. People are now walking two kilometers from across the river from the schools, of course, to uh, SM. <laughs> but this now encourages biking and walking a healthy, a healthy lifestyle. And this is how it looks on bike day. Wow. Proof of concept, you, it can be done at the cost much less than you think. So we are, this is going, this is going, traffic, bike day kasi. And dami kasing nagbabike ngayon. And all of these areas here are, are fresco and bike shops. So hopefully we can replicate this in other towns and cities. The DPWH's head is now mabangong mabango. Every time they have a conference, he shows this. And all the DPWH's now are, are hopefully can replicate this. It was very difficult to convince them, and very difficult to convince them how to build for pedestrians. We had to uh, get them through a seminar where, where we explained that the detailing for the feet is different than for cars. And we did the same thing uh, for uh, Rojas Boulevard Esplanade, a project of then Secretary Mon Jimenez and Babe Singson. And we uh, did this in very quick time by improving the public ram providing bikeways, pedestrian paths, and that uh, this uh, strip here is actually not just aesthetic. The serration that you see uh, absorbs the energy of, of storm waves if they come in. So urban design and landscape architecture is not just aesthetics, but it has function and it, it looks good. It should look good. Unfortunately, uh, in this administration, no one has accepted the responsibility of maintaining the uh, Esplanade, it's now deteriorating. So despite all of this, and uh, what I've shown you in terms of the proof of concepts are only a few kilometers in Metro Manila compared to the 2,000 uh, linear meters of sidewalks that still have to be fixed. And that's why the rest of the city is still uh, screwy. And uh, the worst is that the <laughs> The persons with disabilities, uh, the, uh, the people who designed them and put the, all the harangs to the PWDs, that's even worse. Me railing, which is as per code, but the rest of the sidewalk for the uh, able, you cannot pass. Where do you pass? <laughs> they've, get, they've got this wonderful landscaping that prevents mobility for everyone. And all of the pavement is, you know, there's no maintenance again. And so we have street corners and sidewalks that are ill-maintained, badly, uh, badly constructed. Uh, you will injure yourself every day. That's why Manilans have very strong legs. At saka puro gas-gas yung ano nila. But that's not, that's not how we should live. You see, I have, so, I have one terabyte of pictures of streets. But we have to do something. So other than the changes in the NBC and the codes, we have to take things into our own hands. That's why this evening, I want to uh, announce that uh, I'm forming a political party, an action party, to address all of these problems so you don't trip and fall. And this is even the worst. How do I get down, she's asking. And the uh, senior lady is asking, where do I go? This, this happens often. I've, my wife was in a hospital in Med Medical City, and they have a pedestrian lane that doesn't come from anywhere and leads smack into a tree. <laughs> I posted it online, and within a few hours, the customer relations called me up, and I gave, them a, gave her a two-hour lecture. It, they haven't fixed it yet. So, we have to take matters into our own hands, because I'm extremely frustrated now, and I don't think I'll last, I'm already a senior, for things to change. So I'm forming an uh, action party, it's called the 
Metropolitan Alliance to develop and fix all cantos and sidewalks. Or motherfuckers for short. So we can ensure that everything is fixed. Now, motherfuckers is a call to arms to address the needs of defeat so we can find victory for the Filipino. So please join. So if government, not local government, does not fix our sidewalks, we should go to our city halls en masse and we should shout, motherfuckers! <laughs> if provincial government, maybe not Batangas, does not fix the sides, uh, sidewalks and corners, we have to go to the provincial capitals and shout, motherfuckers! <laughs> if national government does not fix the NBC and the code, and does not do anything to improve the public realm, we must go to Malacanang, the Senate, the Congress, the casinos, and everywhere else they hide, and we have to shout? So thank you very much, and have a motherfucking good evening. <laughs>